Um, yeah, I mean, as you said, there were other options for Canelo. He does seem to be in a stage of his career now, and he, he's pretty much said this when he was going back and forth with Turkey Al Sheik that he'll fight who he wants, and he knows. And this has been the case up till now. Maybe that will change, and we'll talk about De La Hoya's comments in a minute. But he knows that he can draw a decent amount of pay per view buyers, these you know, a good gate revenue uh, receipts as well against kind of not average opposition because Belanga is a good fighter and they can sell it in part on the Mexico versus Puerto Rico rivalry, but he doesn't have to fight those elite opponents that most fans would like to see him go against. So that's certainly been the case up until now. Now, Oscar De La Hoya was on Twitter. He probably should stay off social media to be fair at the moment, but he'd said that he thinks it will do less than a hundred thousand buyers. Um, basically criticize the fight. Obviously, there's no love lost between Oscar and Canelo um, after their, you know, former contractual and, and promotional relationship uh, went up in flames. But does Canelo, does, does De La Hoya have a point, Eamon, in this case? does Is there a chance that the Canelo gravy train, the constant run of big pay-per-view uh, success is going to come to an end with this fight? No, I don't think so. I think this is much in the way as to the last few, last few years of... Floyd Mayweather's kind of reign where it was sort of like you know, fights that we didn't really want. We wanted to see maybe some other opponents, some other different sort of stars, and they kind of flitted out with. And you know, McGregor was still a crazy occasion, but like Andrew Burto, he retired on, on, on that. He fought Maidana again for the second time, where you know, a few boxing fans who watched it the first time probably realized it didn't, wasn't really much jeopardy in that fight, and Floyd kind of handled him. Um, but he was able to sell it again for the second time and get that payday. I think you know Canelo's clearly got that name value and that strength in brand that he he brings those eyes on a regular basis. He can and he can afford to keep having these fights with less jeopardy because he doesn't need to because he's got those guaranteed paydays. He doesn't need any any Saudi money. The Mexican fans have stood behind behind him, and because there's no viable alternative right now uh, for uh, Mexican fans to kind of go and latch on towards he's still got the eyes on him so he can so can keep the gravy train still rolling and even then when it comes to a fight over in saudi arabia or elsewise he can he's still got contenders who he can fight who again don't have that real jeopardy to him we're talking about outside of a fight with edgar belanga that the other one that was seemed to be quite far down the line but for a little bit more money wanted by the other side, this being Chris Eubank Jr. We would be talking about Canelo and Chris Eubank Jr. versus those two instead of Edgar Belanga. And that's probably the next fight that's in the pipeline as well afterwards because you look at what's happening with Chris and he's having a, a tune-up, a tune-up for what? Canelo Alvarez. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and that's there's interest there because, like, we, we look at that and what really is the difference between a Canelo versus Belanga and a Canelo versus Eubank Jr. You're just taking the, the opponent's uh, geography changes, but really the amount of jeopardy in the fight doesn't, really. Um, but yeah, th these are the type of contenders. These are the type of the fights that Canelo's taking right now. Look, as a fan, uh, as someone in boxing, you, you can make the argument to say he's earned that. As a fan, you want to see the, the bigger and better fights. But when you realize that 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 they're further away uh, from happening or the money is not going to be stumped up for it. I, I kind of let it go really. And if it's going to come, it's going to come. Um, but in the, in the immediate year, the likelihood of a Benavides, the likelihood of anything other, Bivol is more likely than Benavides, I think really, because he wants to avenge that defeat. And because although the fight wasn't close in my eyes, um, they were close enough on the scorecards. And from a Canelo point of view, you can think, look, I can tweak a few things and maybe I'll come out with a victory. But the Benavides fight just doesn't seem to want it at all, uh, unless it's for ridiculous money. Saudis might be able to put up that ridiculous money, but they're also really smart. They're smart people to know that, look, we're, we're not just going to dish out a load of money just to get this over line. We'll pay the market value for it. You'll meet us for it. So, it just it, again, it just seems further than than possible. Yeah, the choice between Belanga and Chris Eubank Jr. is a bit of a weird one. You know, I think most fans wouldn't have put either of them on the short list. And Eubank Jr. against Belanga, surely that's a fight to make. You know, that's mm. that would be a more mouth-watering concept, at least. You know, I'm not saying it's 50-50 necessarily, but it's a lot harder to pick than the one coming up on Saturday. And I get the Mayweather comparisons to an extent. You know, Alvarez has proved every bit as much of a draw, I suppose. However, I think the Mayweather fight, especially towards the end of his career, became more like events. 
they were event television you know what was mayweather gonna do was he gonna you know fight an mma guy gonna chin someone after the break and you know what happened with um victor ortiz and so on and i think people were just watching because it was floyd mayweather because he transcended the sport he was a character he was a uh, a commodity you know he wasn't just a fighter at that point and I think people had said, well, he's fought his biggest rival in Pacquiao. And there was no one else they were really, and even that was five years too late, of course, but there was no one else they were really pushing for him to face. Whereas uh, Canelo is still very much close to his prime, uh, whereas Mayweather wasn't. And there are plenty of, you know, intriguing opponents for him to face, whether it is a Bivol rematch, Benavidez, uh, Crawford even. If he, you know, I'd like to see Crawford up at middleweight first and just to see, how he performs at the weight against decent opposition before he gets thrown in with Canelo. But even that's a lot more intriguing than the Blanga fight for me. Um, you know, everyone keeps saying Canelo's faded a little bit. You know, maybe not so much he's there for the taking, but he's not the force that he once was. And the force that he once was still lost uh, to Dimitri Bivol, let's not forget. I don't count the Mayweather one as much um, because Canelo had, wasn't the finished article at that point. But in what was arguably his prime, he did lose to Bivol. Um, and a lot of people would argue he lost at least one fight, if not two, you know, morally uh, against Gennady Golovkin. So it's an interesting one because I think more could be demanded from Canelo in a competitive sense. A, because he is still close to his prime and there are options available, but also because he's had a history of fighting people that would otherwise be avoided, whether it's Eris Londi Lara, Austin Trout, you know, Mayweather early in his career, which obviously benefited him as a, you know, from a commercial standpoint but was a bit of a hiding to nothing in terms of winning the fight. So, yeah, I mean, I understand it, but I don't know if this will last forever, this this kind of uh, unparalleled pay-per-view success. If he keeps on fighting a level of opposition, no disrespect to them, that he has in recent times. You know, we talk about the pound-for-pound pound rankings. You look at, you know, uh, the top three for most people now, we talked about this with Anthony Crawler the other day, Anoya Inoue, Alexander Usyk, Terence Crawford. And you look at who they fought in recent times, you know, Crawford fought Spence in what was a huge fight for, you know, boxing fans, hardcore fans. Then he went up away and fought Majimov, who's a tricky operator. So he's really testing himself. In new a bit of a struggle because there's no real big names at super bantamweight where he is at the moment, but I'm sure he won't linger there too long. He's double undisputed champion. He'll go up eventually and fight some of the better featherweights. So he's testing himself. And then Usyk has beaten Anthony Joshua back to back. And now he's bidding in December to beat Tyson Fury back to back. So no criticism there of kind of seeking out the, the quality of opposition. And with uh, Canelo, it's not that the opposition's not there. So if he wants to be considered in the same breath, in the same bracket as those guys, then he really should be testing himself more, in my view. Uh, Jack Dutton says, as I understand it, this is the last fight of Canelo's three fight deal with PBC. So he'll be a free agent. Who might he sign with next? Saw some comments from Eddie Hearn um, that were put on Twitter yesterday where he said, all things being equal, he believes Alvarez would like to sign with Matchroom. You know, if, if they could offer the same fights, he prefers working with Matchroom than the other companies. And what else is Eddie Hearn going to say? <laughs> but, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, who does Canelo want to fight? Because it's not about, you know, who's just who's going to pay him the most money. But as soon as promoters start saying, well, we'll pay you, you know, record-breaking purses. However, you have to fight this guy, this guy, this guy. Things might change at that point. Uh, DB Cooper one says Canelo ducked our Lord and Savior, Sir Chris Eubank Jr. Could he do it on a cold, wet Saturday night at Brighton Pier? I think not. Duck. See, now I see why DB Cooper one was in the asylum <laughs> with me. Uh, the Keggy says Eubank, a 35 year old prospect, laughing emoji. Yeah, I mean, we're not calling him a prospect, of course. I would call him a contender, a perennial contender, some might say. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think he deserves the Canelo fight any more than Belanga does. Um, and I'm glad it wasn't him, but I'm not entirely jumping for joy. As you can tell, it was Belanga. Uh, Roberto Tarin Jr. says, winner of Bivol versus Paterbiev, question mark, probably will be next for Canelo. I don't know. I mean, having the fact that he's been in with Bivol and was pretty soundly beaten, in my view, what can he do differently to change the tide? I mean, he's not going to become a more natural light heavyweight anytime soon, is he? You know, they Bivol talked about fighting him down at 168. Canelo thought that would cheapen any sort of revenge. They didn't want that. Um, if Paterbiev comes through against Bivol and does it in his typically ferocious manner, is Canelo going to want any bit of that? An even bigger 
you know, stronger, harder hitting, light like heavyweight than Bivol? It's a tough one, I think. I mean, I know uh, Sergei Kovalev, when he fought him, was, you know, a big, hard punching, light heavyweight, probably near his prime back then. But he was only given an eight-week turnaround after the tough fight against Anthony Yard. So there's some question marks around that as well. Uh, deep-